Welcome back to Five Live on this Thursday. We are joined as always by our friend Emma Fife from Venn. Venn, of course, is a 24 hour streaming network where video games, genre entertainment, and pop culture intersect. Mm. Emma, before we get down to business, happy belated birthday. Oh, no happy way. birthday, Emma. Emma. Happy I saw you celebrated a birthday last week. Yeah, last Friday was my birthday. Awesome. Did you get any into any mischief? Not so much mischief. My parents sent me a birthday cake, which was very adorable. Uh, and then my team on the download event sent me flowers. And then I also was gifted one of the Levi's collection Pikachu jacket. Awesome. Oh, those are sick. Those are pretty cool. <laughs> we were going to ask if any video related, video game related gifts were given. So I'm glad you <laughs> well, answered Well, there you for have us. your answer. Yeah. <laughs> Emma, let's start with Black Girls Code. It's an organization with the goal to increase the number of women of color in STEM fields. They train girls ages 7 to 17, and their goal is to train 1 million girls by 2040. Emma, people at Venn, you guys have reported on this. We've reported on this here at KTLA. There is a good chance the newest, biggest video games will come directly from some young women and girls with the skills they learn directly from this program. Tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So this program was founded by Kimberly Bryant. She's an alumni of Vanderbilt University. And one of the things she observed when she was first getting into computer science and engineering is that she felt like she didn't see herself represented in that field. And that was a big barrier of entry for other women of color to get into programming effectively. So she started this program so that all of these young women would basically have this support system and have the resources to make a career out of something that otherwise could potentially just be a hobby. This is a great uh, initiative. I love this. Um, we've talked in the past about, uh, you know, especially uh, when it comes to video games, um, uh, girls haven't necessarily had it easy. We talk about stuff like Gamergate and, and they're kind of, uh, you know, lots of toxic people in that community. And I think this is a good foundation to kind of bring them more into the fold. And uh, as a girl gamer yourself, do you feel like in the last couple of years things have gotten better or are, is there still a lot of work to do or where are we at with that? What I will say is that I find that other women in the gaming field to be incredibly supportive of one another. And the thing that's been kind of nice as far as the internet goes, which can also be an awful cesspool of humanity, <laughs> is that it is a really great way for all of these women with these common interests to find each other and to be supportive of one another. I mean, one of our other hosts on Ben, Chrissy Costanza, was saying that like s since moving to LA and being in the environment at Ben, she's felt like, oh, I finally found girls that I really connect with. That's huge because as Bobby was saying, it can be really toxic and just women in general can get really catty, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to such a niche subject or market. It's a lot of competition, but to see so much support for yeah. either Black Girls Code or just within the gaming community for women, that that's really nice to hear. And I'm glad you had yeah. a good experience with that. And it helps too that we're seeing representation of women in media that is about gaming. I look at something like um, Mythic Quest on Apple Plus, mm -hmm. where, you know, they portray the lead programmer on the game as a woman. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. I, I was also, I was really into um, Halt and Catch Fire when that show was yeah, on the air. That was a great exactly. uh, depiction of there. Um, let's talk about something I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, some people say the Ninja Turtles are, are making a big comeback. I would say they never left, they baby. They never left. <laughs> There's a cool new video game coming out, a, a, an awesome Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle side-scroller. I remember going to Chuck E. Cheese back in the day and playing uh, the Ninja Turtles arcade game. So what's this new game all about, Emma? So yeah, this is very much a throwback to the classic Turtles arcade games. Uh, for anybody that's looking to sort of ace spiritual successor to Turtles in Time, which is a huge hit. This appears to be the game. Uh, as you can see, the art style in it is very reminiscent of the Ninja Turtles of the 80s. Uh, yeah, it's pretty I was sick. Very it's, it's very mm -hmm. retro, definitely. It's not like all bubbly yeah. and stuff. I, I like this a lot. Definitely. It's 
great to see April O'Neil out there repping her traditional <laughs> right. yellow jumpsuit, you know? <laughs> Yeah, uh, the animation style is, I thought we were watching older versions of right? from, from Teenage yeah, Mutant Ninja yeah, Turtles. Same here. Yeah, it's, and um, yeah, thank you for telling us this is the, the actual game. I might hop on this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes, this is an actual game. It's a co-op game. You can play with four players as all four turtles. And I'm looking forward to it. I love a good side-scroller beat-em-up game. And I like co-op games. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like Ninja Turtles. Yeah. So what's so, not to like? <laughs> so, I, I mean, I think we have to go around the room and, and say, which Ninja Turtle do you identify with in yes. your core? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say a turtle. I obviously have to say April because sure. she's the journalist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, how do you not blow the biggest story of your life? <laughs> I'm just saying. Right. you got uh, you got to scoop about these turtles. Good for you for not, you know, keeping your sources. I would have, to, I would have to say I'm, I'm, I'm the master, the, the rat guy. Um, oh no! The rat guy. <laughs> Ninja Turtles thing you were so excited about this you don't even know the I rat like, guy's yeah. name. I can't, I can't remember his My name. My God, Splinter! You Splinter, goofball. that's it. Yeah. It's such a good, like, gross name too. Yeah, it's Splinter. horrible. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I gotta go with Raphael. He was okay. always my favorite. I j mo okay. made, mainly just because I like the color red. Yeah. Um, that's but a good I, you know what? As long as there's pizza involved, I'll be any of them. Emma, how about you? Yeah, Ninja Turtles also made pizza look so good. <laughs> right. mm. uh, when I was a kid, Michelangelo was my favorite, right, which I right. think is pretty part and parcel. But as an adult, I, you know, I feel like I'm Leonardo. I'm the leader. <laughs> yeah. I like it. That's awesome. And that's actually funny because I used to like Leonardo and then I switched. Uh, so I was like, okay. no, too much leadership for me. <laughs> too uh, much. Uh, I don't so want all these responsibilities. Uh, yeah. I would choose Leonardo because I love DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Yes. 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 That's there you go. There you go. All right. And Alan. there is a new and fascinating and fast growing trend online now of virtual YouTubers, VTubers. They broadcast video games, interact with fans, and they bring in big bucks. But Emma, they're not real people. What is going well, on? Oh, this is they're like... real well, adjacent. Michaela, <laughs> that's her name. Oh, real yeah. adjacent. It's, it's like Michaela. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So basically what a VTuber is, is it's like an anime avatar that is standing in for the streamer. So there is somebody behind this anime avatar, but they're putting on a persona mm. and you never see their actual face. You just see this animated thing instead and it's done through motion capture technology. Um, you can see some examples here of like the dots on the face or the mocap suits. It's the way that you would capture actual motion for a video game or for like special effects in the film. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a phenomenon that is blowing up. But if you know, there's people out there that have millions of subscribers. Uh, he's an I being one of the most popular ones, it's actually a Chinese stream. But yeah, the thing that's interesting about it is there's something nice, I think, particularly for women, about the added sort of anonymity that comes with this because as we previously talked about, it can be hard to be a woman in the gaming space and you can be the target of a lot of negativity. So if you are instead this cute little anime girl, it's not fully you. I'm so you know glad I mean? you said that. Yes, because it's so admired that you could be whatever you want to be and not be yeah. criticized for who you actually are, I guess. Um, but in the way that I admire like Daft Punk and a lot of like the house music guys, yeah. like <laughs> Dead Mouse and stuff, because mm -hmm. you don't see their face and you wouldn't necessarily yeah. recognize them and they can't be picked apart for what they look like. So exactly. I, yeah, I admire that in a way, but also it kind of trips me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it definitely wells in a weird gray area but that idea of not physically putting your appearance out there because inevitably any time a woman shows up in a video on youtube there's people in the comments that mm -hmm. are just automatically commenting on her appearance yes. and not on her male co-host and which yeah. isn't to say that vtubing is exclusive to women certainly more popular amongst women, but there are men that do it. Um, and they're like cute little anime boys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, there is definitely a level of appeal where you are 
protecting your own identity. Yeah, I think. I, 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 sorry, sorry, Bobby. I go think ahead. Beyond that, I, I just wonder. Um, I just wonder when you're going to be able to digital uh, monetize these digital avatars into NFTs. Just saying. Yeah. Just putting it out there. So that's, oh my gosh, uh, that's you're valid. So right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was curious about. You showed us some of the technology that was being used to do this, the motion capture and mm -hmm. stuff. So where, who can do? Can, no, like I assume not everybody at home has motion cap technology, so you couldn't really just jump on and no, start it, doing this, could you? Or is it's it? It's definitely a hobby that you need to put a little bit of a monetary commitment into. Mm -hmm. But it's in the same way that you'd put a monetary commitment into doing something like cosplay. Yeah, good point. That's true. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it would require a lot of technological uh, knowledge to do the sure, kind of like, yeah. motion capture stuff. But uh, you can learn basically everything on YouTube now. So absolutely, why not pick it up? <laughs> Emma, where can we go to watch more Ven? If you want to check out more from Ven, you can watch the download on Ven.tv Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And be sure to also check out the Ven Download YouTube channel where we have more gaming and entertainment content. Awesome. Emma, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, we'll be back with more Five Live after this break.